For a while now, Arabella has only been attached to the boathouse for stability at two points. Those get removed this week and some boat braces will go in as Steve and a few volunteers and friends get a bunch of things done to prepare for the first Black Locust shear strake, which you'll see installed on the port side in next week's episode. But first we'll pick up where we left off last week and watch Steve and Carolyn tuck in the stem ends of the final oak planks. I was the most generous with the stem, figuring that the errors in measurement or anything would accumulate the closer we got here, mm -hmm. and that it would be easy enough to, to rip some of extra material off and try to add it. Yeah, it would be if the dang scaffolding wasn't so tight around the face. Never been led to believe that bow building was going to be convenient or comfortable. What are you talking about? Yeah. Trust me at power play? It is going to be like a cartoon. It's going to knock out all my front teeth. I hope not. I hope not too. It's quite satisfying. Just like pulling it out and here's as it comes out.
Right, the planking is almost done. So we have three more planks on each side of the boat now that just need to be finished. So the shear is right here, and there's gonna be a shear plank here that is probably gonna be black locust, and then two more cedar planks that go underneath there. So this is all lined off for the shear already, but we're gonna double check it to just make sure that everything is just right. So these are probably gonna come off. We're gonna recheck everything, remark everything. We gotta cut off all the deck beams that are still proud, uh, just to make sure that those run right up to the planking. Um, and then we're gonna finish the planking on this side. Now I say just this side because on the other side, the uh, staging comes really close to the boat and it's gonna be impossible to get the planks in with the staging in place, which means that if we wanted to do that, we would have to take apart the staging, cut it back, uh, put the planks in, and then probably build it back so we could keep getting on and off the boat, which doesn't make much sense right now. Um, those planks are unnecessary until we get to the decking. Um, they're not gonna inhibit pro progress on the interior, which is probably what's gonna come up right after this. These are the deck beams that are sticking out long here, and everything from the top of the deck beam up is going to get cut off, and the shear strake is going to come level with the top of that deck beam. So right now, we have these cedars on this oak that are wrapped around higher than the shear and just deck screwed into the tips of the frames that are all going to get cut off. And we have this brace that's tied into the building here and that is attached to one of the frames and is attached to this cedar, and that is what's balancing the boat right now. So if you really shake it, you can get the whole building and the whole boat moving a little bit. But it's held it really well. But we got to get that shear strake wrapped in here and this is going to be in the way. It's going to be a lot easier to bring that shear strake up and over the boat than to try to bring it all the way up from the bottom. And we don't need <clears throat> to have access right now to the lower part of the hull. So we're done with planking down there. Fairing is going to wait until we are much closer to launch and we'll fare and we'll caulk and we'll do all that when launch is imminent. Otherwise, we're gonna caulk the hull and all the planks are gonna dry and the caulking's gonna come loose and we're gonna have to do it all over again. So it makes sense to wait on that. And since we are not gonna be doing that for quite some time, we can set up some bracing down below and hold the hull up in a bit of more of a traditional manner. And we can get rid of these braces that are at the shear and we can take the cedar and the oak off and then we can cut all of the deck beams back and trim the frames down, get the shear strake on, fill in the last of the cedars, 
And we'll do that same process on the starboard side when we're actually ready to pull all that staging out. So yesterday, Pete and Courtney, who are visiting on their annual pilgrimage north from Florida to Maine, uh, and they worked on getting some six by sixes and some two by eights cut up so that we can put the bracing in on the hull and we can pull these and get ready to do the shear strike. So let's go check in with them and see what they've got for, uh, for that timber and we can start getting those set up. And then once we get that bracing kind of figured out, uh, it'll get adjusted by wedges and we're gonna go through and check all the measurements on the boat and make sure that things are really nice and level and lock it in real well with that bracing and continue on the next phases of construction. Hey Pete and Courtney, what are you guys up to? Well, we got these six by sixes and we cut them and that's gonna go in here, right Courtney? Yeah. And that's just going to keep the boat from falling over, basically. Yeah. Yeah, so can, so yeah, just making a permanent cradle for it. Yeah, and we just put a shim in later. Yeah, why do we put the shims in? Just, once you adjust it, we can put the shims in there and probably use a softwood shim so it doesn't gouge into the boat too bad. You can ex you can get a bigger uh, surface area, you know, than just point loading it on there. But there's not going to be a lot of pressure on this. No. Anyway. It's basically just balancing the boat. Yeah. All the weight's been there for a while. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's imagine it's amazing what happens when you have ninety five hundred pounds sitting at the bottom of something. Kinda wants to stay there. Shear is free. We're walking around in here. It moves a little bit. All right, at the stem, where do we need to go? You would want to go, you know, the starboard side there. The port's a little high. Okay, so we got to go up on port, down on starboard. You've got to go down on port, up on starboard. So the same way we were going before, yep. up on starboard. Yep, same way. Okay, so I'm gonna hammer this in. Are right, we loose over there, Steve? Working on it. Here, you want this cup? Yeah, yeah. There it goes. All right, I'm gonna walk across the boat and then we'll send it out through the hole downstairs okay. and get rid of it. You can see here as I'm cutting off the deck beams, I'm cutting them inboard of the outer edge of the frame. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One, it's just easier. But two, more so than that, is that if the deck were to ever leak, there's a chance that water is going to get on the deck beam and it's going to run down the deck beam and it's going to come down to the end grain. And if this doesn't meet perfectly with the planking, that can create a spot where fresh water, which is the boat's enemy, 
can get into the end grain of the timber, the worst place for it to get to, and start rotting out the deck beams. And if we have the deck beams cut just a little bit inboard of that frame, that water, if the deck leaks, can run down the deck beam, run right off the edge of the deck beam, and down into the bilge where it can get pumped out and cause much, much less of an issue. So cutting them inboard just makes one less spot for things to collect. Since the frames are split, there's not really much of a benefit of bolting these together. It's very close to the end of the deck beam, and the frames are split, so you could only get maybe a quarter inch bolt in there. Uh, it really wouldn't add terribly much. What really ties all this together is the clamp and the shelf here, and then the hardwood shear strake with the hardwood covering board essentially makes another clamp and another shelf. And that double uh, L timber bracket there, that's what really adds the rigidity. And having the shelf screwed down into the deck beams and then screwed into the shear strake, which is then screwed and fastened into the frames, that's what will lock all of that together. Not so much having the, uh, the deck beam bolted actually to the frame. New volunteers Tyler and Neil and veteran volunteer George worked in the boat cleaning up all the little bits of dried dolphinite before moving on to cutting down the longer bronze bolts and fitting acorn nuts to the ends of those. first piece of art that is on Arabella. This is something that Carolyn drew uh, with a pencil a while ago while we were working. Um, just how she was bored and waiting for people. She didn't expect us to actually draw it in, which is pretty funny. So. But I wanted to get things mostly cleaned out before you cut them off because depending on what tool you use to cut them off, we might create hot metal shards, okay. which I did not want raining down into a sawdust filled bilge. Um, so I laid out this morning before you guys got here a whole bunch of tools upstairs. Um, so you have various weapons to choose from. Um, and George, I'm going to have you help me run the, um, those boards through the delta. Okay. I just got to grab the circular saw and I'm going to knock off what is absolutely unequivocally waste. Okay. Um, and that, that'll lighten the load and make that a little easier. We'll get those run through. And then, uh, then there'll be time to lay them out and figure out what the scarves are. Okay. And bust out your old friend the scarfing jig. All right, I know how to do that one. Yeah. <laughs> so let's go upstairs. I'll show you guys those tools and what your options are. There are some bolts coming down through the shelf that you'll notice do not have nuts and washers. Yeah, so washers, nuts. nuts. Okay. Um, so I would rather you go very slow with tools that you have great control with than, you know, go buck wild with the sawzall and yeah, do a huge gouge somewhere. But with that said, there are definitely some that you're gonna be able to very safely and easily nip off with the sawzall. Gotta figure out how these want to be.
Next week, the first shear straight goes up on the boat, soon to be followed by the two-seater planks that will complete planking on the port side. If you liked the video today, do us a favor and hit that thumbs up button for us. And if you're a new viewer, make sure you also subscribe to see new progress every Friday. And if you happen to be in Newburyport, Massachusetts this weekend or anytime soon, stop in and see me at the screening room. My wife and I are very happy to be finally reopening our movie theater after this last year's unpleasantness. And I'd love to meet some of you in person sometime if you're around. <laughs>